thank you so much for tuning in. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, AKA Wise Courtship. And we're gonna be talking about the uh, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Oprah Winfrey interview. And we're gonna point out some things that um, I've learned from this interview in regards to relationships and, and what we should be doing before we get into relationship. This is not to negate the whole racism situation that came out in the interview. This is not to negate the whole um, mental health uh, suicide issue that came out in the interview. And this is definitely not to judge them. There's a lot of things I believe that they did right, but this is to like uh, talk about some little fine things that people didn't really maybe pay attention to that we ought to make sure we consider before we get into a relationship with someone else. I think they did a lot correct and I think they really love each other, but I just wanted to bring out some points that may not have anything to do with them per se, but because the platform that they're on is huge and everyone pretty much saw the interview, I wanted to share some of those points with you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Like, All right, so today we're gonna to talk about relationship lessons from the Royals. And um, this is like a big hot topic for a lot of people. Um, I don't know why, but <laughs> other than I must say there are some very serious things that have popped up. Of course, you're talking about racism and um, that's very, very important in mental health uh, when someone is looking to um, hurt themselves. That's always very, very serious. But we're not here really to discuss that. I got something on my phone, my hair. We're not here to really discuss that. <laughs> I'm real down to earth, ma'am. <laughs> she's laughing at me. But um, we're really not here to discuss that. And we're not here to down or judge anybody. What we're trying to do is take a high profile case and talk about the wise courtship lessons in this, um, the spiritual lessons in this, lessons that um, we can look at something high profile and say, what is it that I need to learn from this situation that have may have already been outlined in the book? Now, if you don't have the book, I highly suggest you get it. Not because I'm trying to be a millionaire from the books, honey, but because it's a message that God gave me that I believe will bless you. So let's talk about a little bit of this. And, and I am going to play you a little clip too um, also. The first thing is um, there were a lot of lessons in the pre-relationship phase. The pre-relationship phase is extremely important. That's what Wise Courtship is all about. It's the before relationship, the before marriage guy. The key word is before. There's a lot of work you need to do before your relationship. Okay, so one of the things that stuck out with me, and I'm going to um, see if I can play this clip. One of the things that stuck out for me here. Number 10, limited knowledge of the monarchy. The idea of, oh, I grew up in LA. We see celebrities all the time. Mm -hmm. This is not the same. So this is a very, very, really, really small clip that I wanted to bring to your attention that I think sometimes people miss. And this is when we're talking about when you're preparing for a relationship. One of the steps that I talk about is research or investigation. And you can't step, you cannot skip over that step. It is important that you know as much about the person that you're going to connect with. Now, this is not to say that their relationship is trash. It seems like they're very much in love with each other. So it's not, none of this is a judgment on that. It's about picking up the little things, these teeny little red flags that people skip over that can derail their relationship. So you can have an awesome relationship with the person, but it can go to hell in a handbasket over all these other factors that you did not think about. And so she had not done any re uh, research on him while dating him. She uh, seems like she thought it might've been invasive or what have you, but don't think that it's invasive, darling. You need to know as much about the person you're connecting with as possible, okay? You need to know it. What does it mean that they're a truck driver? What does that all entail? You, you would be shocked how many women wanna marry a doctor and don't realize that you may be eating dinner alone a lot. OK, you want you think about the money and all of that, but you not really think about what does this all encompass? What kind of world am I going into? And it doesn't have to be on the royal level. It could be on just a local level, but still have an impact on your life that you may or may not like. 
Okay, so you got to do some research on your potential spouse. Who are they? What do they do? What is their world like? And how do you fit in? And how does it affect you? Because you may, you may not like it. All right. Uh, let me give you a put case in point. I'm a, I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's daughter. I ain't want to marry no pastor. Okay. Not because I have an issue with my father. I love my father. He's deceased now. He's with the Lord. I loved my father and I love the work that he did. And I have awesome respect for pastors. I love them, but I see what they had gone through. And I don't want to go through that, child. I see what my mother had to go through. I don't want to go with that, go through that. Now, if the Lord says do it, that's something different. Evidently, I have something in me to, to deal with that. And he prepared me for it, but that's not what I choose, okay? So that's what you have to know about. The other thing is um, family relations, the importance of family relations. Now, most of the women that's on here right now are seasoned, but you may be watching on another platform and you may not be as seasoned. So you think that that's all you need is love, honey. That's all I need is love. That is not true. <laughs> You need more than love, okay? You need much more than love. You need some money. You need some guidance. You need some clothes. You need uh, education. But you cannot X out the family. This person has been part of a family for all of their lives. You pick an age based off how old the person is that you're interested in. Maybe it's been 30 years. Maybe it's been 50 years. Honey, it may have been 80 years, okay? <laughs> that they've been dealing with this family. You're not going to come in and change something overnight. So there's going to be some issues there, all right, that you would have to deal with. Some good, some bad, some indifferent, but you can't be oblivious to it, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Some things may sideswipe you, such as we may talk about a little bit later. You know, you, you may not expect, you know, racist attitudes, but then sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. Okay, for those of us who live longer, a little bit wiser, you're like, okay, if that may pop out, you might come out of door number three. <laughs> so you got you to gotta kind of expect it, but you can't be oblivious, all right? So family relations are important. Their mother, their father is important to them. I watched something recently uh, where the wife didn't want the husband to go visit his grandfather. I'm like, okay, you know, so you, these are the things that we have to think about, Okay. Um, also, number three, duties of a wife or a husband. Duties of a wife or a husband go beyond, you know, you know, the traditional. Maybe you think it's just cooking and cleaning. Some people don't even honor that. Like they just think I'm gonna be a wife and I'm never gonna cook or never gonna clean. I'm never gonna plunge the toilet. I'm never gonna run after the kids. Well, you, to me, that's just silly. Okay, you gotta have some realization. You may not do all the cooking because your husband may do it. That's fine. You can negotiate. Nobody's saying you got to do these traditional roles, but to just think you're not going to do it at all. Like I'm just going to go in and I choose what I'm going to do and that's it. <laughs> that's not going to work. Okay. But um, you, the duties of a wife or a husband is much more than the traditional roles. It is biting your tongue sometimes when the family is acting crazy. It is living whatever their life is. If your husband is a politician, guess what? You may need to get on the stump and you may have to campaign. Uh, you will have to smile and look cute and put that girdle on, okay? And put, put them heels on and walk and parade around with them. You will have to do that, okay? Um, there are certain expectations of being the wife of anybody. All right. And so those those are things that you would have to you have to expect that you're going to have to get into or think about it. Maybe you don't want to do it. And that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. You don't have to do it. Or maybe y'all can negotiate it, but you have to kind of have a realistic view of it. All right. Of what you may end up having to do. Um, making uh, your own way is number four or financial shift. And all of these things I got out of the actual interview, okay? Um, there was a part in the interview where they were disowned pretty much financially, okay? Um, you Now you got to make your own way in the world. Um, there was a point where uh, there was lack of support, okay? So everybody ought to be able to make their own way in the world. And never, when you're coming out of your family, expect to live on that same level. And a lot of people have not learned that lesson, okay? 
that they are going to still live on the same level of whatever their parents provided. You have to be prepared. You got to be prepared that you might get booted out. You got to be prepared that you might not have um, the same lifestyle, um, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. You just have to kind of be prepared. In other words, you have to have a plan A, B, and C with these relationships or before you go into a relationship. What if you got to do, you got to run a lot of what if scenarios, All right? Um, there's a couple of more. We done. I would say, where am I at? One, two, three, four. Number five, I would say is adversity. Okay. You got to check out the adversity uh, range. Um, one of the major adversities that they've kind of gone through is the race thing. Anybody who's going to get into interracial marriage, interfaith marriage, uh, inter -ge um, geographic marriage, okay, because there is a difference. I've been living in North Carolina for 15, 16 years, but for those who are not from, you know, the North, I'm originally, a, I'm actually a Midwesterner who grew up in the North. So I also seen the prejudice of me being a Midwesterner coming to the North and from me going from the North to moving to the South. Some people don't think about that because, you know, I'm friendly, I smile and I, you know, get along with people, but there is things that I have had to go through from just being geographically different. There are some people that do have some isms on that. I've sat in, I've sat in, um, some things at Campbell and I heard a lot of, uh, you know, white Southern women, really, but they were just going on and on about, you know, our Northerns are nasty and whatever. And I'm like, I'm a Yankee. <laughs> I just be a Yankee. My parents are Southern, but I, well, you different, you know, so it's the same, you know, same thing. We have to kind of gear up for adversity. We know that when we're paired with somebody opposite, that there's going to be something. If you, if you happen to be the person with all the money and he don't have anything, guess what? And you're going to hear a lot of your friends ragging him about, you know, he, you know, he's just with you for the money or he's raggedy or vice versa. If you go and get your little prince that making all this money and you get married to him and you think you're going to be just fine, you're going to have somebody from his side of the family or somebody from his world having something smart to say about you just a gold digger. Okay. So these are kind of, what do you do in adversity? I love how they band it together. Okay, so it's a lot of stuff they did right to protect themselves, their relationship. But we're talking about all these out, outer things that people don't consider when they get in a relationship. Okay, so adversity in your money, adversity in your family. This child, um, um, a du the Duchess, I should say, poor child when it comes to her relationships with her family, other than her mother. Beautiful relationship with her mother, but with her father, uh, stepsister it seems like they just hate her guts i mean the things that they're doing you know she has to deal with that on a regular basis but she brings that into her marriage okay uh prince harry brings his relationship and the whole structure and the moniker he brings that into his marriage okay and so even though that they decided they're gonna band together and move and be with each other they still have to deal with whatever it is that they have in their lives and they have to somehow rework things so that they can live pleasantly uh, on their own so last thing is know who you are that's the last one that I'm that I see in this is that she talked about the mental health now first of all there's things from the outside world that can come and kind of drag your mental health down to the toilet it happens to all of us that is there's something that's why having faith in God is extremely important OK, because you have someone you can talk to first, you can talk to God, you can talk to your pastor, you can talk to your Christian brothers and sisters, different things like that. But um, you wise courtship, when I wrote this book, I wrote it from the premise that you were ready for a relationship. When I started to go on um, tour with the book and I began to minister to different people, I found out that a lot of people who got the book. They love the three steps and all of that, but I started to find out as I began to talk to them that many of them didn't know who they were. And that makes all the difference in the world um, how you are treated if you don't know who you are, okay? I'm glad to say that she was able to speak up for herself, okay? And that's a great thing. 
But can you imagine if you didn't know who you are, how much this could swallow you down? So this could have ended up in a suicide. This could have ended up in, you know, messy relations as far as just back and forth, you know, and how many people have gotten in a relationship with someone and that's what you got. You know, this whole back and forth in your relationships, this whole um, down spiral of your mental health, this whole uh, opening up of um, physical, emotional, sexual, financial abuse. Okay. And so these are some of the things that I took out out of it. And so with that being said, let's turn on our cameras and our mics and let's hear what you guys have to say. Hey, thanks a lot for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to try to upload videos as much as possible. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Take care. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store.